does this world need changed? You bet. And the change happening today, in the name of a great reset, also needs changed, but not forcefully. Forceful is the language of the arrogant rich and political fraternity of Davos. We cannot use the same methods if we truly find theirs so objectionable. Look around you this moment. For many listening, in this moment, you are completely safe. There is no one presently breaking down the door. There is no one directly threatening your life. We have all heard of the many broadcast ramblings from the concealed and silenced rooms of Davos, informing of great societal changes to our lives. Powerful men have decided society is in need of great modification and the subject appears to be not open for invited debate. Our school children are being exposed to an education which would have been unthinkable only a few short years ago. Our cost of living has arisen as dramatically as the coffers stashed away in tax havens. An unhealthy division has fractured in the ranks of humanity along the fault line of divisive wealth. Our governments are openly working in the interests of big business and wealth predominantly today. People, ordinary people, appear to be valueless to those living in the isolated realms of the powerful and the rich. What an incredibly artificial life we have built, and how far have we removed ourselves from the wisdom of life. If you fear this day, you likely think the fear is being caused by the irresponsible actions of those in powerful positions, derelict of duty. You are likely being manipulated to feel this way, for fear has a paralyzing effect on life, making appropriate action to effectively deal with a communal problem difficult to meet. I want to point to something which, if you can look beyond words, may have benefit to your life. Your fears are not coming from where you think they are coming. They do not arise from the unrequested and diabolical assault on so many of our lives so many have come to experience these past few years. Fear does not come from Schwab, nor any government, nor any other self-serving and so divisively selfishly acting billionaire. Your sense of fear is being self-generated and what is being self-generated may be self-stopped. Now, I am not saying that if you stop fearing this day, what is yet to come from the actions of these irresponsible headless chickens leading this world will immediately disappear. Nor will the threats to the lives of ordinary people, this unasked for self-interested direction may inevitably lead us into. If you can cease to be afraid, you are in so much a stronger position to meet whatever challenges may yet come to arrive in this deeply divided world appropriately. So, what causes fear? Fear is obviously a movement within thinking, a movement at root of human consciousness. If you could not think, there would be no inner generation of fear. Fear also holds great relationship to time, which is likewise a movement within thinking a sense of past recorded memories, a sense of conceptual future continually projected out of these past memories. Fear exists within this inner movement of psychological time, inner thoughts, words and images, between memories of what have passed and concepts of what is yet to come. And this inner movement, active within our thinking, shrivels our ability to meet life well. Can you watch this inner movement if you find events of this day difficult to believe and you hold deep concern in your heart for what yet is to arrive? Can you watch choicelessly? If you can, you may find a value to your life beyond words. Thought is fear. Thought and time, which are the same inner movement, are the inner furnace from which fear is forged. Fear darkens our days at the best of times. At times like these today, fear can totally paralyze a life. How many of us have committed suicide these past few years? How many of us feel frailty present in our mental state? How many of us are carrying a nagging feeling of impending trepidation? Do you want a good world? Do you want a caring world fit for your children's children to grow into? We have never lived in such a caring world. We have never learned what it means to live well, to prosper as a race, 
together in direct relationship. We live tribally within our own little groups and we feed on the lifeblood of each other like vampires. If you want to live in a good world, then you must be that good. Living in fear brings fear to the world. If you want a life of care, you must be that care. If you seek a land of love and an ending to all conflict, you must find out for yourself what it means in your life to live a loving and conflict-free existence. Our society represents what we are. What is our society telling us we are this day in the outer societal reflection of our inner corrupted nature? You cannot better what is rotten to the core. Bad apples need thrown out, not bettered. Unsafe buildings need torn down, not made better. Corrupt societies need end, not built back better. And although such outer changes to our lives would bring great feelings of comfort to our many suffering members of humanity this day, there is one change which is absolutely essential, without which all others become completely futile. A revolution is needed in the human mind and heart. There is something so desperately wrong in our world this day, and the source of it all, if changed, changes the outcome, and the source of all of mankind's actions is human consciousness. Is this world sane? Is this society sane? It values money more than human life. Is this sane? Is 36 trillion in tax havens, while around 20,000 children die daily from starvation, a sign of an orderly world? Is the profiting to the tune of billions from the tragedy of a pandemic affecting all of our lives a sign of a caring society? This society is a hell for so many of us who have little choice but to take the daily kicks in the teeth from above. Decarbonisation is certainly a more cared for agenda today than the quality of the lives of the majority of human beings. I wonder, can we ever find care for each other? You know, it is impossible for a mind living in fear, which is a mind living within a sense of inner conceptual thought generated time, to care. How can any mind carry fear and love together? Fear brings darkness to a man's life and the sense of anger. Can you watch these inner educated movements? This is a form of psychological control. The fact is, were we unafraid, we would find relationship and we would begin to look after each other. Is this not important this day? Watch your inner psychological movements very carefully. If you fear, Watch fear carefully, learn about it. It is preventing your ability to meet this broken world positively this day. If you live in fear and anxiety, you are adding to the level of fear and anxiety in this world. It is not bringing all the great injustices of man against man we need meet. This has been our history, our echo through the corridors of time has been blood and sorrow filled tears. We have never changed. We have always lived insanely and our insanity is related deeply to the fact that thinking, which is limited knowledge and so divisive between us, runs our lives. And so our lives have become conceptual as thought, words and images are conceptual. When relationship is found between images, the true nature of relationship between human beings is lost and concepts become important and great resets and fear enter our lives. Dig deep, investigate and question this. Can the human mind undergo a complete revolution? Can the human mind change? Can it stop being what it is this day and find a new approach to life? Void of fear, can you cease to be confused, fearful and anxious, pleasure-seeking and desirous? Can you cease to live in a world of inner-generated words and images centred around a concept of self and limited to selfish self-interest? Can you meet the silence of this living universe with a silent mind? and so fuse with the source of your life in a blissful unity of undivided presence. Can you end the past and so stop looking to the future and so come to live completely 
in this present moment. The only source of life-giving creation, love and death. If you can, you may find a change coming over your life, and your life may never be the same again. Where once was noise, fear, depression, anxiety, desire and pleasure, now we find silence and space. And as you look through and into the depths of this inner silence and space, you come to see what was always there, and yet which has never been touched by a mankind who has to this point in his living evolution preferred the company of conceptual illusions of words and images to truth. And your heart, free at last from fear, will overflow with care for one another. And this is the free human heart capable of building a good world, the only thing capable. If we want a good world, our lives and our actions must surely be good. If we want a good world, our lives and our actions must also be good. Is this possible? Am I insane? Can you find out? Life is not found in words and images, in memories, in desires, nor fears. This is the unnecessary complexity thought adds to our lives, and thought has been programmed, and our approach to life of thinking is a programmed approach brainwashed into each of us over at least 12 years of standardized mandated education, when we were too young to question and our brains were in a stage of development. Thought is the source today of every human action of inhumanity, including this great reset. Life is found only when the false comes to an end and vision returns to a man's life to take the driving seat from thinking. Out of the concentrated mirrored halls of human memory-based consciousness and into a dimension impossible to describe because life was never found in words.